Hello and welcome to Irish Football Fan TV. I'm Gary, joined by Hugh and of course this lad here, Paul. Today we're going to be discussing Irish players, youth Irish players heading over to Germany for a chance because of course over the last couple of years we've seen uh, some British players head over there. Now, exception Sancho, the man was bought for seven million and handed the number seven jersey at, at Borussia Dortmund. So I don't think he kind of comes into that category. But we're thinking the likes of Troy Parrott, who, you know, there's talk of him getting a new contract. Maybe that means he might be going alone. I think, personally, that he should be looking somewhere in Germany because their development system is fantastic. Back in, I think it was Euro 2000, they came bottom, the, the German national team, bottom of the Euros with only one point. And after that, they decided, you know what we're going to do? pump all a load of money into the youth systems and make sure we have players for generations and it's worked for them so i think instead of you know sending players out into the championship league one like troy Parrott, 18 years old he's 18 i think he's 18 in a couple of weeks yeah. there you go eight, nearly 18 years old sending him out to the championship where he's going to be coming up against like three center backs who are all over six foot three kicking, that, the, legs off. kicking the legs off and that might not be the best thing it works out for some but i think that the bundesliga is very technical it's completely based on the strikers are, are the fox in the box style striker that is completely based on finishing and technique and attacking awareness. I think something like that could be fantastic for, for Troy, especially at his young age, developing. Because a lot of players have went over there and come back and have been you know, introduced into first teams in the Premier League and the Championship. So I think it'd be a good idea for Irish players in the future to look into that. What do you, what do you make of that? Yeah, I think it's been a success for, for players that have gone abroad in the past. Jack Burr went to Holland and done very well. Do you know what I mean? Um, obviously came back. And the, maybe the, the moves haven't worked out from there. But in terms of going over and doing that, Daniel Crowley as well, who's back at Birmingham now, he's doing very well for them, scored at the weekend. I don't know what the story is with his eligibility at the moment. Um, people are kind of wondering what the crack is there. But it's worked out for those two. That's just two off the top of my head, kind of without going too far back. Um, but that's Holland, I understand. Jeremy has obviously worked out for, for a lot of players. Um, and Ampadu is now over at Leipzig. Yeah, yeah, he's at Leipzig. Yeah, moment, yeah. Um, he's obviously Welsh, played against us, and probably the best player in the park yeah. at that game away in Wales. I think the fact that they can attract players now, the likes of Erling Haaland, I know he's got a bit of pedigree behind him with um, Salisbury, wasn't it? And they can attract players that came because their youth development is obviously quite popular and it's proven to be a success. So with clubs like Manchester United, Manchester City, Real Madrid, all looking at players like Haaland, the fact that Dortmund and clubs likewise can attract those kind of players, it's almost like an example to younger players who want to grow into that kind of mm. you know, development system and progress with their own careers the way he might as well. So it'll be interesting to see who else they can attract. Yeah, when you don't even look at, like I follow Everton, John Joe Kenny's over there at Schalke now, and yeah. he struggled to get into the Everton team, he's absolutely he's flying, flying at Schalke, they all love him, uh, they'll, they'll probably be looking to keep him on past this, but yeah. in terms of player development, I do think it, it, it is a, a perfect place. I think the key for someone maybe like Troy Parrott, if Mourinho's not going to play him, he needs game time, and he needs... He needs first team football somewhere at a decent level. Like I wouldn't want him playing anything lower than championship. No. I would want yeah. to either Bundesliga, Premier League, or Championship, or or that kind of level. That level, uh, Championship being the lowest level that I would like to see him play at. Um, you know, there's, there's a serious chance for him there to make the squad. Mm. Everyone knows the talent to do them. The thing about Troy is, and you know, you're speaking about Germany and stuff like that. He can play anywhere across, I, I would call it the front four, because he can play on the wing, he can play number 10, or he can play up front. He, you know, he can even drop into midfield, he did it for Stephen Kenny in the 21s. Um, he can play all these types of positions, you know, and do them comfortably. And he can ch change during the game and still be effective. Mm. Whereas, I think in, in Germany, they're the type of players that they're looking for, those technical players, and play into different... A uh, number of positions as well. Do you know what I mean? He he would be a very good loan for someone. I think now because he can't break into the Spurs team. I think he wants uh, Mario wants to protect him a, a little bit as well, which you can understand. And that's been a, a kind of key thing. Like I know Spurs don't really let Troy do many interviews, even when he comes out of the Ireland team. He's not allowed to do many interviews uh, because they want it again. I think Spurs fans are are are, are very excited by him. Ireland fans are very excited, by him. but I still think he's a long way from being what people are kind of making him out to be. I still think he's a very, very good player, but I don't think he's going to be the type of player who's going to um, win you the playoffs. Mm. I think he could be effective in the past, but I don't think he's going to win win like, win like the game in the playoffs type of thing, where I think a, a Connolly or or someone like that would be more more sense. Do, more do either like of you think with the long-term injury of Harry Kane that Parrott might see some more first-team football over the coming months? I think Joe's little boy in Jan uh, yeah. this month, I think he'll get a loan sign in or he'll get... Um, he'll get a player in he yeah. might get someone in that he's trusted in the past like an older player 
Um, they might even get something like Giroud in or something like that, just to yeah. just to fill the void, you know. Uh, just to say, like the 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 parrot thing, it doesn't like you know that parrot over in England, like he's he's gone over, he's made it, he's made a name for himself at youth level and everything like that. But I think that it's actually could be important or a new thing to cut out the middleman of England and waiting for these Irish players to to get a chance in England to be thrown into. It's like this thrown into the deep end of the Carabao Cup on a Wednesday evening against Hoofed FC, and if they don't make it, that's that's it for them. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So I think if we if we not cut out the English game. But if let's say if we're so being so dependent, on yeah, just being so dependent. On it. Get scouts over here from Germany, have a look at them when they're 12, 13, 14, let them develop that way because I think that could be a thing as well. Because it seems like we're so reliant on having a player in the Premier League straight away. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like fantastic. There's been you know my club, family, Troy Parrot. They've been fantastic this year coming in. Aaron Connolly, fantastic coming here coming in. But like even if they had gone to the Bundesliga five, six years ago. No, they'd be playing consistently now. The, the level of training and coaching is so much, I, I'm not going to say better, but it's different and it's successful. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah. It's proven successful for young players in the Bundesliga. So I think if we cut out the middleman of waiting for an opportunity to come in England, do you know, the Premier League, the Championship, even League One for some Irish players, I think if we have contacts, have scouts coming over and look at our players when they're 12, 13, 14, it could be huge for the development and progression of Irish players that will eventually play for the Irish national team and benefit us. Yeah, I think there's a bit of pathway there too. Like it, it can be all well good saying it, but if they're not coming over and doing it, mm. I think they do come off to tournaments. You know, I know St. Kevin's have a tournament each year. There's the Kennedy Cup, there's, there's other cups like that. And I do know that other clubs bring their players over as well. They'd obviously be looking at yeah. the talent that's available. Um, I think it's becoming more of a... A newer thing, I suppose, going to Germany. It's been a newer thing. It's only really come in the last kind of five years, I suppose you could say. Um, but the thing about us as, as fans, especially Irish fans, is we always like the new thing and want the new thing to be brilliant. Like we're looking upon Troy Paris almost as like Wayne Rooney. Yeah, at that age. we are, but he's yeah. not. He's, he's not at that level yet. He, he, he may get there. He'll be he way may. better than Rooney. I'll say it now. <laughs> <laughs> but like. People are dependent in that sense, same with the likes of Conley and stuff like that. And Conley burst onto the scene, oh, he's going to score loads of goals. And we need to be patient. Look, Conley hasn't scored since the two against uh, Spurs, yeah. I, I think. And, and even now with Ida as well, I think it's going to be a case where people just... We need to be a, a bit patient with them at the yeah. same time. It's not, there's no problem being excited by, by players, but let's not get carried yeah. away at the same time. So if they don't score a couple of goals, a couple of games, you can't turn around and go, oh, he's shit. Yeah, he's shit. Do you know what I mean? If Troy goes somewhere and doesn't, and doesn't score for a couple of months, we can't be like, oh, he's a bad player. Yeah, no, so, I, do you know what I mean? He needs. Uh, I don't know. If you're saying I was just saying the general public. Yeah. Um, quick to turn on players. They, Absolutely. They're quick to to log players. But yeah, I think that's a great point as well. I think potentially as Irish fans with excitement, if we see young talent come up, we maybe jump at you know seeing good talent come through the systems, and we might put maybe slightly too much pressure on the younger players like Connolly, who you know, and Parrot who immediately come to the scene with big impact, score some great goals, then maybe go through a, a dry patch yeah. and then the, the fans are quick to turn on them. I think that's a, that's a good point by Paul and maybe it's something we could review, you know, putting pressure on young players that maybe isn't the best thing for them. Well, going over to England as, as Irish players anyway, they're already like up against it as any other player was because for the English club, it's, it's, it's in their interest to give the contracts and the playing time to young English players, yeah. which is so fair. We do, the, we, do, we do the very same. Do you know what I mean? Like They want to um, have these young players coming up through the system and eventually play for the national team and win them the World Cup. Then we're going to happen. But um, I think that the Bundesliga would be, or these other leagues would be fantastic for the likes of these players that don't have to compete against a player the same age who's already a little bit ahead of them regardless of their football ability to get that contract where you know young players these days in England are getting 20 grand 20 grand a week do you know that kind of way and then in their contract they have this certain playing time they're going to get ahead so I think if to come back to Troy Parrott at the moment like let's say, let's say if Jose Mourinho does bring a striker in in January like he has to be looking he get his new contract fantastic he deserved it he, he earned that but he should be looking at going and getting some, some, some game, some he, game was, he was in the squad against Denmark as well. Yeah. Which, you know, a lot of players were left out of. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Um, which shows that Mick clearly rates him very, very highly. And he wouldn't just have him in there if yeah. he was just, you know, an ordinary player. Do you know what I mean? I think, he, I think someone like Troy should be in there. He's young, he's exciting, he's unpredictable. Ahead of like a Scott Hogan or something yeah. like that. And that's, I, I think people are, you know, really... Hitting uh, Scott Hogan hard lately, it's, like it's not his fault he's been getting picked, even though he had, wasn't playing for so people were giving him abuse and stuff like that. But um, I do think someone like Troy or something like, again, if he, you know, it's like when you when you're young, 
for like you're coming up against Alex or something like that, you raise your game and you do stuff that generally yeah. when you're playing against people they're not really expecting. I think he has that in his locker as well, which which is always a key thing to have. And that's why I think he should always be in and around the squad, even now at I suppose he'll be eighteen from the time the playoffs come. But he needs to go somewhere and play, and I can't emphasise that enough, is that he has to go somewhere and play ahead of March because Mourinho clearly rates him and he says he's rated him, but he wants to protect him. And you can see both sides you can see both sides of it, but if he wants to go to Germany, that puts it back to you and you. Who would you recommend? I wouldn't say Dortmund. No, I, I reckon that the Bundesliga too, like Stuttgart can be a good team, Hamburg, teams like that that are always looking for youth, uh, good players, like you know, someone like Troy, you know, if you get well, Holland would be a good the Eredivisie would be would be a good one as well, but I think that they they try and promote Dutch players as much as they can. Well, I, I, I just have this thing with, the, the, with Germany that it doesn't matter where you're from. It's, it's the talent that you have. Mm. And they, well, they, well, they do try to bring in Austrians, sort of Poland. Oh, they, bring, they bring them from all over. And like, like the prime example is they're bringing in, they're bringing in the Brits who are, are not usually known for leaving you know, England and Scotland and Wales to go abroad. They don't usually do it, but the Germans have they've, they've tapped into that and I think it's a fantastic thing. Well, I, you know, is Troy Paris... Going to get that new contract, go on and go on loan, and if he does, should he go to the Bundesliga? Is is that the start of Irish players going abroad to team or to leagues like the Bundesliga, the Eredivisie, like you said yourself? I think it's a good idea. Let us know in the comments what you think yourself. Thanks very much, Paul, and thanks very much, you. Up the Bundesliga.